Right guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're gonna take a look at building that central support plank um, that goes all the way around the fence. It's quite a simple thing to do, um, but it will get us um, introduced to another really important node uh, that gets quite a lot of use, and that is the sweep node. So let's jump straight in. So let's identify what we need to do. We need to add this support plank that goes all the way around like in our reference imagery. Uh, and we can do that with a sweep node. So let's just put down a sweep node. Um, a sweep node's really good for creating geometry from curves, okay? Uh, it's got lots and lots of functionality. So what we want to do is take our existing curve, so at the user-generated curve that we have as an input, we can take that into the first input of our sweep node put the display flag on the sweep. You can see we've got an error at the moment because it is expecting a second input. So you could input a profile and then use that to loft the geometry around the curve. Again, very similar to workflows you might have found in Max or Maya uh, in Houdini, it's called the sweep node. Um, and by default, it's looking for a second input. However, it's got some presets sort of built into it. So if we come up here to the parameters for the sweep node, we can say in the surface shape, it's currently set to second input cross section. If we set that over to round tube, we get a tube, square, but the one that we're interested in this case is ribbon. And that's just a flat piece of geometry which gives us lots of flexibility to start working with it. Okay, I'm gonna press Shift W to turn on my edged faces. Uh, and you can see by default, it's given me eight subdivisions. I don't want that many, in fact, I don't need any. So I'm just going to put that down to one. Um, in addition to that, I want to jump over to the UV tab and just click Compute UVs. That will give us a good starting point for our UV coordinates. Uh, and if I press space 5 to jump over to a UV view and then space F to frame up, you can see that it's laid out those geometries in a sort of <laughs> infinitely tall uh, UV layout. But that'll be good enough for us to just get started with a, with a basic UV layout. So now I just need to dial in the size of this uh, this plank. So I'm just going to do space 2 to go to my top view. And I'm going to template in this merge node at the very bottom here. So I'm going to select this pink flag. So I can see sort of a, an outline of my, of my fence. And this will give me a great sort of visual cue of how thick to dial in this width slider here. So I'm going to middle click on it and come down to the lower values here and just start trying to dial it in just so it fits neatly within those fence posts. Something like that maybe. And as you can see, it's conforming itself really nicely to that existing curve. Okay, I'm gonna space one back and over to our sweep node. With that, we can add a bit of thickness with a poly extrude. So let's plug that into the first input. And then in the distance slider, we'll just give that a bit of thickness. And by default, the poly extrude node doesn't add a back face for it, but we can come down in the options in the poly extrude and just check this box here, output back. And there we go, fill that gap in for us. Okay, next thing we wanna do is add a transform node just to position this. So put that in, select that and then it's the Y component that we're interested in. We can just sort of scooch that up a little bit. All right, it's probably a bit too thick, so I'm just gonna go back up to the poly extrude. Just drop that thickness down ever so slightly. And then maybe reposition it. Okay, and with that, we can bring that transform node all the way into our merge node and put the display flag on there. Cool, I'm trying to keep my network as tidy as possible. You can see things start to get very, very messy very quickly. Um, if you want to tidy up your lines, you can hold down Alt and just click on a joint to drop down a point there, which are very useful to keep your network nice and tidy. In addition, you can put things into network boxes, these things here. So if you select a bunch of nodes and click on network box, you get this neat little uh, organizational tool. So this network box I'm gonna call, uh, I don't even know what the correct words for fences are. I should, <laughs> should have done my research. Um, so, uh, 
long plank. I don't know. That's definitely not right. Okay. And also these input geometries here that we've that we've built. So our fence post and our support post. I want these to stand out because we could do some more work in these. So with these both selected, I'm going to press C to bring up my color palette, and I'm just going to give those a blue a blue color so I know that these are things that I, if I want to add some different types of fence post I can jump in there and do do my modeling okay one more thing that is really bugging me about this is these corner posts here um, are facing this one is facing a different direction to this one um, that's not what I want uh, and likewise this one here is facing a different way so we're going to delete that polyframe and we're back to where we were. Okay, I'm going to go back up to this polyframe and set that to first edge. Okay, so we're still where we were, but at least we've reduced the uh, the node count somewhat. But what I want to do is that normal attribute that we were talking about before, uh, how it dictates the orientation of these copies. Well, in this case, I don't want there to be an orientation. I want them all facing the same way. So I'm going to delete using an attribute delete. I'm going to delete that normal attribute from the points. So before we copy those corner points, I just want to delete the point normal. So this is an attribute delete. And if I just type capital N in there, it'll delete those point normals. And you can see we've got a much more uniform layout for those corner posts. Okay. Other things that I would do if, if I know I'm making a digital asset, there are certain parameters that I know I want to give the uh, the level designer at the end. So this one, for example, this resample node, we want to give this control to the level designer so they can specify how many fence posts there are. And as you can see, we can sort of dial that in depending and it'll give us a different look every time. Uh, so I'm going to set that back to point three as default. And because I know this is the parameter that I want to promote, I'm going to give that like a gold color. So I know coming into it, uh, this is going to be a parameter that I can promote. Okay. So with that, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can add a little bit more variety to this. We're starting to get the base, the base system sort of up and running. Um, as you can see, it's still completely procedural in that we can position these points around and everything sort of updates as you would expect. Um, but in the next video, we're going to take a look at adding a little bit of randomness and uh, how we can start bringing in more variety into our system. So hopefully see you there. Thanks.